Brands and creators are paying big for video editors that can make their brand stand out. And that's exactly what these 3D Reels does. But enough talking, let's just get right into the video. The first thing you're gonna do is just drag on a fusion composition like this, and I will make it 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Like this. Now we can go into the fusion page. The first thing I'm gonna do is just drag on a background like this and connect it to the media out. And then I will just make this background transparent. This 3D reel is made of two scenes. So I'll just make the, the first scene first. So the first thing we're gonna do is just make a 3D composition. What we will need for that is an image planer, a 3D merge, a camera, and a 3D renderer. And just connect the image planer into the 3D merge, camera 3D into the 3D merge, and the merge 3D into the renderer. And then just connect it to the background like this. Now we have set up the first composition. We will just drag on a background for the background. Um, and then if we click on one on this merge, we can see it in this window here. Uh, and you will have to go up here and then you can choose how many screens you want to see and you'll just choose two. And when you're on this 3D scene here, you can drag back the camera if you want to this and you can just scale it up like this so let's just add another image planer this will be for those two rectangles we have on the sides and then just add a background to it like this now we will choose the color i'll just choose this sign color here and add my rectangle to it if we click on two on the background like this we can see the background in this window and then we can check off the solid and then we can drag up the border with to create this border effect here now we can go back into the media out by clicking two then we can drag down this square so we can see it on the screen something like this and i will just go into this one and drag down the border width a bit so it's something like this then you can just copy it add it up here and then just drag it into the merge 3d and then in the 3d here you can just drag it back like this so it's something like this now we can add the text that says how to make and i'll just copy this image plane and connect it to the merge then i will add a text and just say how to make I'll just scale it up a tiny bit and choose another font. And I'll just choose Helvetica and just size it down a little bit like this. Now we can create the camera movement. Uh, that will be pretty basic. Just go into the transform of the camera and then just go to frame 1, keyframe it and go to frame 60 or something like that. And just zoom in something like this and go back to the this one and just zoom out a little bit more. That's pretty cool. Now we can go into the spline editor. It's up here and then we can just smoothen out the curve a little bit so just click on F to make it flat then i'll drag the ease in backwards a little bit so it's something like this so now we have uh, created this uh, curve for this one and it looks pretty good this is pretty much the first scene we will do some of the uh, a little bit cooler effects later in the video uh, where we add some glow to the text and to these squares and we will add some grain and stuff like that but i will show you how to do that later because it's it can be pretty intense in the computer and we want to be able to play it back while we are re-editing it. What we are going to do now is make the reveal for the next scene we are going to do. So just add a rectangle and just make it as wide as possible and go to frame 45 on the rectangle and keyframe the height and go to frame 70 and keyframe the height and just drag it all the way up and click on inverse so we go in like this and then it opens to the next scene we're gonna make uh, and we can just rename this to scene one and then we can copy it Control c Control v and just connect it like this and just rename this to scene two and the reason why I added uh, before the scene one is because we want this to be behind the scene scene one. So what is closest to the media out is the thing that will be on top pretty much. So what we can do here is just go into the camera and reset it like this and just drag down and drag back the camera a little bit. And this one we can drag back a little bit as well and just change the background color to a white. Something like this looks pretty good and just scale this one down a little bit in the image plane so let's just take a look at the reveal that's pretty much how we want it to look i'll make the edge a little bit thicker something like this and then just drag the camera back a tiny bit awesome this looks uh, pretty dope we will just go to the camera keyframe it at frame 45 then go through frames 85 and then just zoom in a lot like this and now we can go into the spine editor if you want to see the tool you are selecting you can just go in here and choose show only selected tool and then just cut Copy these, click on S, and the ease out will be, you will drag to zero, and the ease in you will just drag up a little bit like this. And we can just copy this text here, drag it over, just add it, 
and let's just change the color to black so we can see it like this and just make it say these just size it up so it looks like this and for this one we are just gonna drag it forward like this so it's in front of this rectangle and just size it down let's just rename it to these instead so it becomes easier when we have more text on the screen now we have made the first animation now we can go to the next animation with the camera so just go to the last frame of this animation and just keyframe all the values up here and then go to frame 135 and keyframe them all now just zoom in a lot and then you can drag up the x value and the y value and rotate it so it's something like this just rotate it a little bit more something like this let's take a look at it. this animation looks pretty cool uh, now we will just add the text for it so just copy this text here add it and and then we will just go to frame where we can see what we're doing and move it backwards like this move it up to a corner like this and just take this c value from here and copy it in to this one like this and now you can just play around, around with it where, where it is on the screen i'll just put it up here and then it will say viral and just choose another font i'll choose the font called great vibes you can download it on google if you want to and then i will just do a reveal animation for it so this is the animation we got and i will just go to frame 95 keyframe it go to frame 110 keyframe it and just go back and turn it down to zero so it looks like this just copy it and connect it down here and i will make this say camera and just drag it down a bit like this and i will choose another font and i will just choose gotham bold and you can download that font on google as well and then you can go into this blind editor and just copy and just take these hold shift and just drag them over so it begins animating on it from 110 and then just go to frame 190 keyframe everything just do a massive zoom in and just play around with these values here and rotate it a little bit more maybe like this and just zoom in like this pretty cool so this is the animation for now now we will add another text i'll just rename this one first say camera just copy these drag it on and on this one we will just say moves like this and just say moves in here and then just go into the image planer drag it back a whole lot like this and then just go to the camera go to frame 90 take this c value and just copy it and put it into the e value on this one like this and then we can just drag it up a little bit i think this is uh, pretty good actually and the reveal for this text will be a typewriter effect so just go to frame 140 keyframe it and go to frame 170 go back to the first one and just drag this one to zero so yeah this is uh, looking pretty good already so what we'll do now is add this invert color effect so just type invert color and then add it to this here and just go to something like 100 frame 150 keyframe the blend and then keyframe it one frame later and just drag this one down to zero this looks pretty good already and there's a lot more we can do so the first thing we'll do is just smoothen out these uh, keyframes here just go into this blind go on to this one and just zoom to fit and then just highlight all these and then click on f so yeah, now we have already smoothed out the keyframes. It's actually that easy to smoothen out the keyframes. And then you can of course drag in the ease in and ease out a little bit if you want to. I will not do that uh, for this instance. I think it's, it looks pretty good in the default settings. So yeah, this is pretty much the effect we're going to go for. So now we can actually begin adding some of the more cosmetic stuff such as lens distortion and uh, grain and stuff like that. So the first thing we will add is just a lens distort and remember to take this one and just add it and then you just drag up the lens distort a little bit like this so we get some lens distortion that uh, gives a pretty good look. The next thing we can add is just add some glow to all of these things. So I'll just add my own glow and you can download it in the description if you want to and then you can find it in under the effects here and I'll just add that to the text. Text. then i will just turn up the glow size a lot and then i will just copy it and add it to the other one as well and this glow is a lot better than the default glow that the Vinci Resolve have in my opinion but you can experiment with it and find out what you like and then i will just add it to this one as well great so this is pretty much the glows we're gonna do now we can add a grain 
to all of it this grain here and then we can zoom in a little bit so we can see the grain and now i'll just turn down the power a little bit so it's on something like three then we can add scan lines and then just turn up the frequency a lot and turn down the blend quite a bit as well as you can see these scan lines give a pretty nice look to it what we can also add is a vignette like this that will look good on our white uh, thing here and then just turn down and then just turn up the size a little bit so this so this is before this is after i think it gives a great look and one thing i forgot is actually choose a font for the text that says moves and i'll just choose the font called fluke and you can also find that one on google and uh, that's a pretty cool uh, looking font i think we can add a little bit of a camera shake to uh, the effect as well and just add a camera and i will actually choose this camera shake instead i think that's a little bit better actually and just drag down the zoom to crop and then add a replicate uh, for the border type then you will just turn down the motion scale a whole lot and the speed scale a lot as well this just gives a subtle shake to the effect you don't notice it but it gives a little something to the to the effect this is pretty much it let's just add some motion blur to our 3d compositions and uh, then we will pretty much be good to go i'll just crank up the shutter angle to 360 on both of them but it can be pretty intense on the computer if you don't have a good computer i will actually avoid cranking up the shutter speed to 360 but you can do whatever you want let's just render it and then we will see how it looks this actually looks awesome what we can do now is just I'll just scale up the text that says moves a little bit. I think we can make it a little bit bigger, something like this. And I, then I'll just try and center it. And now I will actually add the last effect, which is the pretty much the same effect that they have in After Effects that is called Posturize Time in DaVinci Resolve. It's just called Stop Motion. The way that stop motion works is it divides the number you have up here with your project frame rate. So let's say I use 60 FPS and I drag it down to 4. I will get 15 fps in the end result and if i just drag it down to 2 i will get 30 fps so that's pretty much how it works it's very much used in these 3d edits and i think it gives a great effect but it's optional to edit if you don't want to edit you can of course leave it out let's render it and then we will check it out I think this effect is awesome and if you liked it as well make sure to subscribe and if you want to get some free plugins in DaVinci Resolve uh, check the link down below and I'll just see you in the next video.